Good morning. Bill Hurtado with TransWest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. We're about 25 miles north of Denver right here. It's my privilege today to show you our 2023 Winnebago Navion. Uh, this is the 24D model. There's three different models in the Navion and this one's my personal favorite. I'll hopefully uh, convince you of the same. You may have a different opinion, but this is a fantastic setup in this one. It's got the most real estate of all three models once that slides open. Well, let's talk a little bit about this. The uh, paint job on this one obviously is very, very nice. It's got kind of that chocolate brown uh, mixed in with uh, three other colors right here. It just leaps out. It's absolutely gorgeous. On all of our Navions, we do have the solid aluminum wheels front and back. Running boards already installed from the factory. And as we work our way back here, um, these windows are a big, uh, just wonderful addition to a lot of RVs nowadays. Uh, these are a dual pane polycarbonate, very difficult to break right there. When these close down, you have no exposed rubber in here and you've got a full block out from the bottom and a screen from the top. Those can integrate together as well. So if you want a little more privacy, but some airflow, you can do that. You can even have this thing partially open in the transition uh, position, if you will. Uh, so you've still got the security, but you've got nice airflow right there. So brilliant windows right there. Uh, this does have a full length awning. We're a little bit breezy today, so it's putting itself away uh, after I have it out for a few minutes. So let's talk about storage on this one. This side baggage door right here has the rotocast compartment with a 400 pound capacity. And if you look up to the ceiling of it, you'll see we've got the Xantrex inverter in place up there. That'll take power off of your house batteries and invert it up to AC power. So you can run a few things on the inside without having to start the generator. Generator, something else I wanna to talk to all of you about on this one. There's, there's two options on that, propane or uh, diesel. And this particular one does have the diesel generator on board. That is a, uh, uh, an amazing upgrade on the Navion right here. The uh, life expectancy of a diesel generator is, well, it's really unknown because since they've been doing them, they're all still running just great. But just like diesel in your car or truck, it's expected for that thing to just go forever. The big advantage on the diesel generator here is fuel consumption. It uses nearly half the amount of fuel. Now understand we're comparing LP to diesel, but the per gallon rate is about 45% less on the diesel right here. So that's a really nice feature. Considering you've got a 26 gallon fuel tank and a 12 gallon LP tank. So it's better on both ends as far as that goes. You'll also notice, of course, we've got the uh, LP extension down here so that you can run appliances outside over here, whether it be a heater or they make ovens now that are really nice, a barbecue. Uh, all kinds of things you can do out here with LP. So that's really nice. Uh, forced air furnace. And this has the AquaGo water heater system on it. So this is a tankless water heater on demand. Uh, virtually gives you unlimited hot water flow. So imagine if you're at the campground and you've got your hose connected for your sewage. You can leave your gray valve open. You've got water coming in to the city fill. You can take that 20 minute shower, no problem, uh, up to 140 degrees. So really nice feature right there. Had some storage underneath the closet back here and they wanted to give you that ability to get in there. Uh, what I love about what Winnebago has done is just little things. They're very smart. 
there's a at the bottom of the closet up here is a hatch that you can raise open so you can get to this stuff while you're still inside you don't necessarily have to come out here to get it over here again rotocast compartment and that's that's in the kind of a gray color on that one um, so nice and easy to get to stuff again that same 400 pound capacity rotocast by definition means one piece and they're very strong very easy to clean out as well all right so in this particular model we do have the generator on the patio side but thankfully they were smart enough to give us the exhaust out the back over here so it's not blasting over on you on that side these are all led lights inside and out again very long life expectancy on those very low failure rate so these things show up really well in the fog and seldom do you ever have to service these things they're they're all a sealed component and very very reliable so i'm a big fan of led lighting you do have a 5,000 pound hitch on this so 5,000, 10 percent of that is 500 that's what your uh, hitch weight capacity is on here and being a diesel with 325 uh, pound-feet of torque this thing really doesn't succumb to that extra weight back here say as a gas unit would uh, doesn't diminish your mileage very much or your power so again big fan of the Mercedes Sprinter chassis on here it's already got the seven-way plug down here and as many of you have heard me say in the past you can always adapt down from seven but you can't adapt up from four all right so over here simple physics you know they kind of expect you to back into your campsite right here and you've got your water sewer and electric all over on this corner well on this corner is all your hookups for your water sewer and electric actually your water's a little further forward but over here you can see that you have your 30 amp cord over on the right that'll drop down through a hatch in the bottom on the left is your what we would call wet bay and you've got your hot and cold running water outside your tank valves built up above um, you've got your uh, actually your freshwater inlet over here sorry about that your your gravity fill is a little further forward and then your low point drains so what you may not be able to see until you get up and look down just a little bit you'll see a hose there that has it's a clear hose with some blue in it well these are all winterized from the factory when they show up here and that's a year-round thing so very simple to winterize this thing again many of you have heard me talk about this uh, i was a winnebago technician for over 30 years and i'll tell you that is one of the greatest things ever to be able to winterize and dewinterize this unit on the fly yourself uh, is priceless in my opinion no having to bring it down to the dealer no paying a lot of money to have that done i urge people to to get us when you take delivery of this unit and we give you that two hour orientation to show you through everything Let's concentrate on exactly where the valves are you need to turn and the process involved in that. It is simple, but you have to be told. Uh, so I like the idea of being able to winterize this entire unit with one gallon of antifreeze, which costs about five bucks. It'll take you 15 minutes and you save all that other hassle and expense. So not to harp on that too much, but it's a big deal to me. And I think in the future, you'll find it's a big deal to you as well. So looking down the side over here, the next compartment there is only service access. So that's where your holding tanks are. In case they ever need to be serviced, the technician can open that compartment right there and access the tanks. Another good look at that aluminum wheel back there. They're just so sharp looking on this thing. Absolutely love the aluminum look there. And moving back, we have another rotocast compartment here, fairly large. Uh, that uh, it's all the same thing, one piece rotocast, 400 pound capacity. So nice extra storage over here for you. 
And then moving forward, this compartment has the 12.2 gallon LP tank and the pump for your hydraulic leveling jacks. This is the automatic set of hydraulic leveling on this thing. So again, uh, basically a one push button setup. Once you enable that system and tell it to level, uh, it takes about four minutes. You can walk away and start doing other things. This unit is also equipped with a full length slide out cover up on the top. You know, I, I've been in situations myself where, you know, imagine you're traveling, you're on your way home, you're on your way to your destination, whatever it may be, and you decide to pull in that rest area and take a, take a little rest before you, say, get up in the morning and continue on on your trip. Well, you bring your slide out, you have some dinner, you watch some TV, you go to bed, you wake up in the morning, there's a couple inches of snow on the ground. Well, without that slide topper up there, you need to go up on the roof now and brush that off before you bring the slide in. And that's because of this flange that goes all the way up around. You don't want to compress that snow because you won't be able to close your slide. With the slide topper on there, that snow is going to harmlessly roll off of there. Your slide's going to come all the way in. You're on your way. So very nice feature right there. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Mercedes. Uh, this three liter V6 turbocharged diesel may only be rated at 188 horsepower, but most of you know that the horsepower is, again, just a rating. It's really not what gets this thing up over the mountain or gives it its towing uh, ability. It's the 325 pound feet of torque that makes the difference right here. So these are amazing to drive. Of course, you would expect that from Mercedes anyway. But also your accessibility to everything in here is very easy. Whether you need to gain access to your starting battery right there, your windshield washer fluid, your brake fluid, your oil fill and check, your coolant reservoir, your death refill, your air filter access. Everything is very simple and easy to get to. So, big fan of Mercedes. They work absolutely wonderful. All right, so. I'm gonna step inside and I'm gonna want to show you guys a few things in here, especially about the 24D floor plan that I think is just exceptional on this. So a rear bath design like this means you don't have a bath in the center or the corner that takes up a lot of the real estate in here. Um, this has corner shower, the big closet. Remember I mentioned the access down below gets to that outside storage. Of course, medicine cabinet. Now take a look at me at six foot 250 in the shower right here. This is nice. I can make this work. Very simple design closing off like so. So I love the shower in here. You don't have to have the rod in here. Of course, that's for hanging extra clothes if you want to. And then of course this closes off really nice. Some of the things um, that I really love about this, aside from the floor plan, is the option of the white Technoform cabinetry look, be it the countertop, your overhead cabinets. Many units have that same wood grain in the dark right here. This not only gives you a nice offset of contrast, but it brightens up the whole thing really nice. So big fan of Technoform. Um, while you're right there, I just want to point out, Technoform is an Italian made cabinet. It's very lightweight. Um, the, the beauty of being lightweight, of course, is it keeps the overall weight down, increases your carrying capacity. But the failure rate is virtually zero on these cabinets right here. With the nice design of the curve, the lightweight, the marine style latching right there, uh, just a big fan. Technoform is the way to go. 
While I'm here, I will point out that this has a generous pantry in it with the full depth slide out drawers right here. So your top drawer has a little more space than the other two and then space up above over there. Easy access to your fuses and breakers down below here. Um, when it comes time to learn about winterizing yourself, just in case you forget, there are instructions here as to how to turn your winterize valve and how to bypass your water heater. And that's in behind that panel right there. Very simple, it really, really is. Many of you have heard me talk about 12 volt refrigerators. I have watched the evolution of RV refrigerators since the 70s. And this is the greatest thing ever. So 12 volt, it's very economical, obviously not cycling all the time. You've got a nice big solar array on here to offset that. And then what I love especially about a 12 volt fridge is you don't have those fins in the back. You have full depth of storage in this. So even though you have the same basic size here, you've got incredibly more space in a 12 volt fridge. The other thing that's very important to me is this cools down about four times faster than your regular RV fridge, which is called an absorption style. It absorbs heat out. It does not get cold like a 12 volt fridge does. And important, it's gonna work all the time. It doesn't have to be level like a regular absorption style refrigerator does. So I'm big fan, big fan. This is about a third the cost to replace if you have a failure on it versus that absor absorption style as well. Okay, so as we move forward right here, um, I want to demonstrate the bed. And the big reason I love the 24D here so much is because out of all three models, this is the only one that has two separate entities to sit at. So for daytime, you've got your sofa right here straight across from the TV. And very nice to take that, tilt it your way a little bit if you so desire. Or if you have the bed down and you wanna sit here, you still got easy access to the TV from either position. If you're a very large person, it's very nice to sit back, throw your legs up this way, and you've got a nice little step right there to basically turn it into like a lounger. So whether you're here or here, easy access to the TV centered between the two. It's a smart floor plan. It was well thought out that way. And where's my button? Oh, there it is. Okay, so back to the bed. The other models, um, they have smaller beds in them. And again, if you're a larger person or people, the size of the bed can make a big difference to you. So once again, I love this floor plan for these reasons. This is a fast, easy setup. Switch is in the bathroom here, by the way. So we bring this thing down. Now look at the size of that. This is quite a bit larger than anything else you're gonna find, especially in the other two models. So for a small unit, big features, big U-lounge dinette, big galley space over here, big bed, big shower. It's funny, it's like bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. I'm gonna put this away just to get it out of the way while I ramble on here for you. All right, so a little storage underneath the sofa right there, some storage underneath the dinette seats over here. Storage. Storage is a big deal for everybody. Um, you wanna bring you know, a lot of items or you have certain items that you wanna keep in here all the time. So you can just jump in and go on the fly. You've got all your stuff in here. Even in my personal RV, I have my RV clothes and I keep those in there all the time. So again, I can just get in and go and start having fun. 
Let's talk a little bit about some features on here. I did mention, of course, that we have the diesel generator, and that is a humongous upgrade on the Navion. You've also got holding tank heaters. If you're concerned about those tanks when it's getting down into, oh, let's say the teens, um, and you just want to protect those tanks so that you don't have a problem with freezing down there and being able to dump when the time comes so you don't have any ice in there, then obviously that'll take care of that. I mentioned the inverter outside, so that's very easy to flip on and you can see exactly where you're at at all times. Uh, it takes a minute, but the battery voltage will show up over there. All right, um, I have the slide out right now. Slide room control is up here. You have to have battery on, engine running, brake engaged, park brake engaged, those three things, then you can operate the slide room. Um, up here we have our monitor panel with a water pump switch, and this will give us our tank levels and our battery level up here. And then our solar controller, which is either working all the time and always providing power to those batteries, or you can disable this with a shut off as you come in the door. So you don't necessarily have to have your solar going at all times. Okay, um, so once again, the 24D, the biggest slide of all. So we call this a full wall slide, even though it doesn't encompass the bathroom over here. But with a slide this size and this depth, obviously it gives you the most amount of real estate inside the unit right here. Now let's talk about size for just a sec. Um, I've been RVing a long time and uh, I have seen that the majority of state and national parks have had a 30 foot limit on RVs going in and, and camping there. Well, this is obviously well below 30 feet, but what has trended in the national and state park uh, world, if you will, is many of those now are switching to a 26 foot length. And that's a key number, especially for any of our Navions, because all of our Navions are 25 and a half foot long. So fine, if you go to a 26 foot limit, you're still in the club. You have no limitations on the state and national parks. So 25 and a half foot's gonna give you as much as you can get and still get into every one of those places. Um, I want to mention something on this galley. So the 24D has the longest galley right here. So great amount of space between your sink and cooktop. The cooktop is both gas or induction. And I love the fact that it's, there's four huge drawers right here and these light up when we open them. Soft closed drawers. Lights on all three, actually all four. I don't know if you can see just this little reflection right here. That light's not on all the time. It's activated as soon as I open the drawer a little bit. So very well thought out there. Another thing that's really nice is you're closed up here, you're traveling, it's late at night. The co-pilot slash passenger can come back here and do anything. They can convert this or use the overhead and take a nap. They can cook a meal. They can watch TV. They can access the refrigerator. They can use the restroom all while you're in transit. And what I would emphasize is important, like I mentioned, late at night, very dark out. Um, you notice up on the overheads, you've got those lights that come on, indirect lighting, and it's also down here on the floor. So not lights that are gonna interfere with the driver in any way, but the co-pilot slash passenger is gonna be able to see everything very easily. Now with these lights on up here, that also gives us some lighting inside the cabinet up here as well. So just good stuff, good planning. They really thought this out well. Combination convection microwave. So that is in lieu of a conventional gas oven. 
And then this 24D, remember this length of this galley is just incredible. So the storage space for the kitchen is second to none. It is really wonderful. You can see the box down there for the filter. You got a full water filtration system on this. And the sink is a dual good size 18 gauge stainless. The pull out faucet, of course. All right, so nice stuff. Now, normally I could flip this up out of the way if I'm not using it for a bunk and get a little bit easier access in here. But this unit's new, it still has all the plastic on everything up here. These are the panels that go over the side windows for blockouts up there. You have AC, DC, and USB up in the top. And then the reading lights, see if I can reach this. So a single push gives me the blue light. And the blue light's important because when you're looking at a book with the black print on the white page, this really makes it jump off of there. And it's easy on the eyes. Uh, versus we can hold this down if you want the white light, that's fine too. You can have that. That's over the main bed also. So very nice there. These are booster seats, just like we had when we were three years old, sitting at the dinner table. We had to get up there be a little closer to eye level with our parents when we were eating dinner or going to a restaurant. They use that because this floor is higher than the cab floor. So when these seats swing around and face this direction, we want to get you up a little bit higher. It feels more like a normal chair at that point. All right. So on the chassis portion of things up here, <coughs> this unit does have all the latest enhancements with power seating, power mirrors, heated mirrors. Um, I've got, let me go ahead and start this up here a little bit for you. Got uh, controls on both sides of the steering wheel here. So these controls handle the multifunction display straight ahead. These controls handle the uh, 10 inch touch screen that we have over here and these little square black things are like a mouse pad so I can move to different features on there that I want to do go back to the home position uh, I can use my different media learn info about the unit itself uh, Mercedes has its own apps that you can use look at that I said Mercedes that tells me that we have the voice command enabled on this thing right now um, hook up your phone. So very nice. And this little device over here is controlling your adaptive cruise. So you can set your distance to the car in front of you. Also, we have um, all the safety enhancements as far as the automatic braking, the lane mitigation, uh, proximity warning. Uh, those are all in this right now. Uh, so the latest, greatest of everything. Other than that, you know, it's got a great HVAC system up front right here. The heat and air, uh, I think it's like a seven speed fan. It's just it's so easy to adjust and get comfortable up here. I'm also a big fan of that diesel generator because in that really hot climate, you're traveling down the road, um, Tucson in the summertime, let's say. It's 112 out there. You fire up that diesel generator, keep your air conditioning going, cool the entire cabin down. Uh, you're using a very minimal amount of fuel to cool the entire cabin. What a great way to travel. It really, really is. All right, well, that's a good look at the 23 Navion 24D. Um, I'm sure you guys will have some questions. My phone number should be down here on the bottom in a sec, 714-809-4813. Uh, that is a Southern California number, but keep in mind, we're 25 miles north of Denver here uh, in the great state of Colorado. It's a beautiful day today, too. Please give me a call if you have any questions. You want to see what else I have in stock right now? I can send you the build sheet with all of the options on this thing. And certainly happy to work out a deal with you with or without a trade. So once again, 
Thank you so much. Bill Hurtado, TransWest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. Thanks for watching.